Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you'd like to keep up with what we're doing, remember to click that subscribe button below. It's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. Keep in mind everything that you need to know about photography. F-stop, shutter speed, lens selection. Nice photo, I've got beautiful light now. Oh my God. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. You know, over the years, I spent a lot of time here in the southern Appalachian Mountains photographing its majestic landscapes and abundant wildlife. It's also known as the wildflower capital of the world. Now, earlier this spring, we were here photographing the spring femoral wildflowers, which grow in the forest and bloom before the trees have had time to put on their leaves. It's midsummer now, and professional nature photographer Kevin Adams has invited me back here to photograph the summer showy wildflowers, which I hope you enjoy. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. Is that somebody laying on the side of the road? What? No, no, no. no. We, we got to stop. It's up here somewhere. Let's go right on the side of the road. Oh my gosh. Kevin, <laughs> what are you doing? I <laughs> thought it was some engine person laying on the side of the road. What are you doing here? I'm taking pictures. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> I don't ever do that to me again. Well, what do I do, man? I'm just taking pictures. What are you taking pictures of? Well, you see the black-eyed Susan here? Uh -huh. And you know one of the cool things I like about the summer wildflowers is they grow high. And so you can get down below them with wide-angle lenses and you can shoot up for really Ooh. interesting perspectives. And notice that the sun is right behind here. So you're so shooting is, directly into the sun? I'm shooting directly into the sun. And that's one thing that I like to do when you can get down with an interesting object in the foreground. When you've got the sun in the background like that, you stop the lens down to light. You remember when we were doing the waterfalls a couple of years ago? Right, right. It's the same technique. So to get that sun star, you stop the lens down to like F16, F22, mm -hmm. and it creates a starburst effect with the sun. And you know a lot of people spend a lot of money on filters to do that. And we, oh, do, it, yeah. we do it right there in the camera. Oh, yeah, do it sun. the right way. And it looks a lot better, too, when you, when you do it that way. you got to be careful, though. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be looking through the lens directly at the sun. Uh, what I do is I always hold the depth of field preview button down right. when I'm shooting and so that darkens everything and I do that to compose and then when I'm actually ready to shoot I move my eye away from the away That from way, the yeah, because that magnification it can really screw up your eyes. Oh yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want to be doing that. You don't want to look at the sun directly at all. Well using the depth of field preview button, you know, to protect your eyes and, and compose these shots against the sun you know, that's a good way, but couldn't you also use the live view mode? You know, a lot of these new digital cameras has got the live view mode on the back, the LCD screen. Would that work? Yeah, that'd work good, actually. And it also helps when you're in a situation like this where it's really difficult to get the framing just right. Right. Uh, you use the live view for the composition, for composing the photograph as well. It works really good. But it doesn't look like a very comfortable position. <laughs> well... It's, it's not the most comfortable, but you know what, man? If you want to make the best shots, you just got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Are you about Absolutely. done here? Yeah. I, I, let me get one shot here. Just finish up. Okay. Good got deal. It. All right. How about help me out? <laughs> Come on, old man. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey Doug, pull into this overlook here. I was just here yesterday shooting. It's a really nice opportunity with church cap lilies. Oh yeah, uh, we've got a bunch of mountains in the background. This, this should be a nice shot. Wow, this is pretty. Doug, what the, they're gone, right there. There were two really nice church cap lilies right gone. there. Gone, you, they were here yesterday? They were here, I shot them. Well now, Goodness. it looks like uh, somebody's been all out in this stuff. It's all trampled down. You know what I'm happened? I'm not believing this. Somebody, somebody cut those flowers and I, I bet it was a photographer too. I have seen that happen before. It makes me sick to my stomach. But they'll sh when you have a really nice situation like this, they'll take their pictures, and then whatever it is they're shooting, destroy they'll get rid it. of it, destroy it, so nobody else can come behind them. Because, yeah, oh, this would be goodness, a, a beautiful is... shot. I mean, talk I, about I'm not believing that. Talk about unethical. Yeah, you know, and photographers get a bad rap for stuff just like this. Well, the ones who do this deserve it. Yeah, absolutely. You can see here where they cut the cut the stems. Oh my here gosh. Here and here. Oh, it just makes me sick. There were really nice Turks cap lilies that come up like this. And you know like the black eyed Susan that we just shot, where we can get down low. Right. I just love that about these flowers. Well the idea was we would get down low to the lilies here and shoot them. And unlike like the black eyed Susans, we've got a nice background here. We've Beautiful. got these mountains in the got background. Mountain range. So with the wide angle lens, you've got the Turks cap lilies here and the mountains in the background, a nice wide angle scene. And it's just, it just makes me sick to think that somebody would, would do something like this and, and ruin it for everybody. Right. You know, not just the other photographers like us that come by, but the, but the tourists. I mean, they don't get to see it. And, you know, and, and then that's not even to, to talk about the, right. the whole ethical issue of just right. destroying something like that and the fact that it's illegal. Right. You know. Absolutely. Well, at least you did manage to get a couple of decent shots yesterday. At least that, yeah. Kevin, now this is a nice spot. But look at all the color. I mean, we got all kinds of species right here in this one patch. I see uh, yellow cone flower, uh, Turk's cap, Joe Pie weed. This is beautiful. I love it. This is one thing I like about this time of the year. You know, you got all these colorful wildflowers and then they grow close together in these patches like this. So it's perfect for doing a favorite technique of mine is what I call wide angle close-ups. Wide angle close-ups. Wide angle close-ups, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you take a wide angle lens and you can you can just get right in on the subject, but you're including a fairly large area. So you're getting a lot of wildflowers in the scene. And Ooh, that makes you feel beautiful. like you're actually standing right in the middle With of the it. wide angle lens, yeah, you get right in on it. Wow. It's really nice. This is a good spot for that too. Well, I'm gonna try using a 17 to 40 lens. That should, that should give me the effect that I want. That should be wide enough, yeah. That'll work. I've got the 24 to 70, um, but that'll work good. Those will work good, yeah. Like with all the wildflowers we've shot back in the spring and, and on this trip, we've got to be careful not to trample down these these wildflowers. You can, you know, get our tripods adjusted just right, but got to make sure we respect the plants and their environment, you know? You are absolutely right, Doug. Of course, the good thing about uh, about this setup and a lot of setups for the summer flowers is <laughs> you can just about shoot from the road. You gotta be careful when you're shooting this close to the road. I mean, this is prime tourist season. You got cars buzzing up and down this uh, uh, this highway here and, and it can get dangerous. So we got to keep it safe too. Well, I appreciate you reminding me of that because that's a problem that I have sometimes. I get so caught up caught in my up photography in that uh, I forget that I'm standing in the road or on the edge of a cliff or anything like that. You know, Doug, one advantage of switching over to digital photography a few years back is I can actually use my polarizing filter when I'm shooting wildflowers. Used to couldn't do that because I was shooting 50 speed film and I put a polarizer on, then my shutter speed would get so slow and the wind's blowing and stuff. 
Now I can crank up that ISO. I'm actually shooting this at ISO 800. Wow. But with today's cameras, the quality is good at that. Oh yeah. So. The ISO, um, can, you can really handle those high, high numbers now. They've gotten the, the noise and the grain yeah. down. And that caught me think about it, ISO 800 and we're shooting wildflowers. We wouldn't have thought about that with film. No, absolutely not. As a general rule of thumb, I never went above 200. I'd have never even bought a roll of ISO 800 mm -hmm. film, much less use it to shoot wildflowers. And I use actually one of two techniques when I'm doing things like this and shooting real slow shutter speed. You know, you can use, like you're doing either the cable release or you can use, if you've left that in the truck, like I just did. <laughs> the um, self timer. The self timer. And uh, <laughs> yeah. it works just as, just as good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is really beautiful. Well, you know, Doug, you can walk back to the truck and get your cable release. I'm going. <laughs> Nice. It is nice. You know, in, in a spot like this where you got this nice patch, I mean, there's opportunities everywhere. You could spend hours just shooting this one little area. Yeah. I mean, this is incredible. Uh, you know what? I want to move down there. Yeah, I'm, I was looking at there. that tree trunk myself. That looks good with the flowers there. Let's, let's check that out. I am 15th of a second at 18. What are you at, um, Ken? The sixth at 16. I so 800, but I got my polarizer on. Yeah. But it is making a difference. I mean, it's cutting the glare. I mean, you think about a polarizer for skies or water, but it really makes a difference on those leaves. It yeah, cuts it the glare off of them. Saturates that color. Yeah, yeah it really yeah. does. It's worth taking the extra time just to wait for laws in the wind if you need to. Fortunately, this morning we don't have a lot of wind. I mean, we've got a slight, slight breeze, but it's not problematic yet. I think as it warms mm -hmm. up today, you know, thermals will increase and uh, we later might have day. a wind problem. Yeah, later in the day, it's going to be bad. It's it's a little more than I would like right now. But, right. But, but it's we manageable. just deal with it. Yeah, it's manageable. You can shoot like right now in between laws. I think this is really... Uh, perspective that I really haven't even thought of for wildflowers. You know, so many people think about, when they think about shooting wildflowers, they think about tight macros, which we did that spring. Right. And right. Uh, and, uh, and absolutely, this you know, on this trip, I'm going to do some tight also, right. but um, tight macro stuff. But this really is a nice perspective. I mean, it just puts you right in there with them. It's incredible. All right, I think I've pretty well got everything I want to get up close here. But I tell you what, Doug, let's head across the road. I want to show you a technique with using telephotos from a distance Excellent. in a situation let's like this. Let's try it. That sounds interesting. So we shot it up close mm -hmm. with the wide angle lenses for the wide, ang wide angle close up, which was pretty cool. But another thing I like about patches like this that grow on the hillsides, right. on the roadsides, is you can back up like we are now with the telephoto lens, creates a different perspective because you know when you change positions, you change perspective. Absolutely. So from a distance here, we can take the telephoto, we can zoom in. We're shooting the same amount of the flowers in some of our compositions, right. but because we're from a further back, it is a different perspective. And with the slope like this, we actually have a terraced effect of color now. Exactly, exactly. And it, you know, it's on that, that slope, like you say, so we can back up and we're still shooting at somewhat the, the same plane of the flowers. Right. So we And we can get more in sharp focus too. Exactly, exactly. We don't have to, to stop our lens down as quite as much. Well, I think I'm gonna use a 200 millimeter uh, to try this with, and you could do anything, a 500, a 300, 400, whatever. I've got 70 to 300. I like to use the zoom lenses because you can, you can change compositions very easily just by zooming. In fact, in a situation like this, wow, I mean, you could just like set up and just stay in this one position and just keep moving around and just a few inches and you've got a completely different shot. Now, another thing that I noticed, now that we've backed up a little bit and we're shooting with the telephoto lenses, the wind issue isn't quite as evident. 
I'm not I'm not picking up the the movement of right. the wildflowers. You know, when we were doing some tight close-ups back this spring, we actually used uh, some little clamps and stuff to help stabilize you know individual plants that we were shooting right. real tight. Obviously, you can't do that with right. a whole patch. So backing up like this really uh, kind of helps with that whole wind and blurred uh, movement. Absolutely, issue. and you know we had the same problem when we were shooting the the turks cap lilies and the the black eyed susans. Mm -hmm. You know because we were so close on them, and, and it just magnifies every little movement. Another nice thing about this spot is we're actually in the shade of the ridge of this mountain here so we're getting that nice even light we're not having to worry about controlling um, and diffusing light of course on a big patch like this we couldn't diffuse it anyway but uh, when that sun gets bright and harsh just high contrast it makes shooting wildflowers really difficult and i would right. say that that would probably be the number one thing that people need to you know look out for when they're shooting wildflowers is the light quality right right well, i think i got well, not everything I want, but I think I got enough at this spot. How about you? All right, hang on, let me get this one. Okay, I'm good. That's good. Wow, Kevin, this is a beautiful patch of red bee balm. Another name for bee balm is Oswego tea, and an interesting fact about it is that it was used by the colonists as a substitute for the English tea that had been dumped into Boston Harbor during the Boston Tea Party. With a patch this big, how do you decide what you're gonna shoot? I mean, everything's a shot here. Well, Doug, let me show you how I approach a situation like this. First of all, I want to try to find a flower that's isolated, if possible, from the rest of them because what I want to do here is shoot more close-ups. Okay. Not a clump, this is not a great situation for that, so I want to try to do a close-up, and Bee Balm is a great one for that. This particular flower here looks like it would be really good because it's a little bit isolated from the rest of them, and the background from the angle that I'm probably going to be shooting, which is here, is looking up. The trees in the background okay. are enough of a distance, so the magnification I'm shooting at, we're gonna have a nice poster-like Blur, background. Blur it out. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get my my tripod set up in approximately the right position. I'm not trying to get it exact now. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because the wind is blowing mm -hmm. pretty badly now. So I just wanna I get it kinda of close, kinda of close there. We've got to deal with the wind. We've got a big flower like that right. that's blowing around. So got a little trick I use for that. It looks a little top heavy. Yeah, it's just a little <laughs> top heavy. So now the reason that I've set up my camera in approximately the right position is I want to make sure that my little stake here, I'm not getting it in the frame. Gotcha. And I think that that'll probably will work about right there. So mm -hmm. I get that kind of close. And yeah, I bring this with me. <laughs> I was wondering why we had a hammer and a stake yeah. <laughs> uh, for photographing wildflowers. So we get that good in the ground there. Mm -hmm. And then very carefully, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner. Very carefully, because I don't want to damage the flower, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. And I'm just gonna pull that around. Now, the process of doing that is probably gonna move the flower around a little bit. Right. That's why I don't want to get an exact composition. Now I can come back. Oh, that looks good. That is a beautiful plant, isn't that it? That looks good. That looks good. I need to shift around just a little bit here. And you know, when you're looking for one particular plant to isolate like this out of a big patch, that's what you need to look for. Look for the one that's in the best condition. It's in a good, yeah, that's a really nice one. I'm getting, I'm getting the flower and the leaves in a nice vertical shot. That looks really good. I see our wind picked up a little bit. Yeah, so just wait for a little lull. Yeah, it's still now. Yeah. That's gonna be nice. Okay, got it. Now, a good thing I like about the bee bomb is you can, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Yeah, that looks good there. So I'm gonna get a little tighter. All right. Lock up the mirror, mm -hmm. wait for them. All right, and I'm, The stake really does, I mean, it oh, made all the difference you, in the Well, world. you couldn't shoot it. Well, yeah. you can see how this one's moving around like that. This one's staying still. Now what you're shooting, probably a quarter of a second, a fifteenth of a second? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that long a shutter speed, you're gonna have some serious yeah. uh, motion blur. Okay, I've got something else I wanna try here. And this is something I like to do with, uh, when I'm shooting a single flower, isolating a flower like this. If there are other flowers around, this will work, and this one will do it. What mm -hmm. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this flower around back here, and I'm gonna stake it off ever so gently, mm -hmm. and then that'll be an out of focus flower. The focus is here, this one's out of focus. Just trying to increase but that uh, another element in your composition. Exactly, exactly. Make that much That'd more interesting. Useful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set up a second tripod in the scene. And that tripod is to hold this clamp. Gotcha. I, this is a homemade one, but you can you can buy these ready-made. And some people use them to stake off the flower. Yeah, I've seen for the most wind, people but, actually clamp the flower itself. Yeah, but you it. see, it's got a little little thing. So uh, the stick for me is a little more rigid. But it works great for doing this because I can ever so gently, now I don't want to damage it, I want to be careful. Mm -hmm. But then I can move it around as I need to. Okay, I think that'll work. Let me get back here. Wind's picking up even more now. Yeah, yeah, but boy, that looks really good having that out of focus flower there in the background. Yeah. See, I want the background to be like poster-like okay. out of focus. And this flower here is not going to be in focus. It's, it's just going to be gonna, color. It's going to be color. Mm -hmm. It's just adding a little extra element to the scene. So in this particular case, because of the magnification I'm shooting at, I can get by with F8. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little, it's just enough depth of field to get this flower that I want. Gotcha. Enough of it in focus. And even not all of it is in focus. Right. You know, but that's, that's what I want for that. Well. I think you have worked it to death now. I believe I have, Doug. This has been good. You ready to go find some more? Let's go. Let's do it. Kevin, this was a good spot. That's Turk's cap, Lily. But you know what? We spent 15 minutes trying to get set up for this. Well, Doug, that's what it takes sometimes, you know? You gotta get everything right. There's a slight breeze going on, so we had to get our wind brakes and stuff set up for it before we could shoot. Usually I like bright overcast lighting for wildflowers. We've got dark overcast. So we, we don't have much light at all on our Lily here. And particularly with this type of wildflower, and it, it needs some accent lighting. This is a little bit different technique than we've been using on wildflowers. If, it, if this was a sunny day, we could diffuse the sun and have nice diffuse light on it. It would look really good. We don't have that now. So what, I, what I'm doing instead here with, on my angle is I've got the, the overall exposure set for two stops under. Okay. So the background's gonna go dark, but I'm using my flash to put that accent, just a kiss of light onto the flower. Right, right you don't there. want to make it look like a flash picture. You no, want it to look no, no, as no. natural as possible using a flash. Exactly. That rain has turned to lightning and thunder, and I, know. I think we need to, to get it on out of here. But I think we've got enough to do the dirt trick. I know. As much as I hate it, I think you're right. It is starting to get pretty loud, that thunder. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kevin, I know you're known for waterfall photography. That's what you specialize in, but it seems like you're starting to kind of specialize also in wildflowers. How'd you get into the wildflower film? Well, actually, I've been shooting wildflowers for ever since I started taking pictures, about 25 years ago. Wow. I think, I think uh, a part of it came from my mother who loved wildflowers, and she always instilled a love of nature, everything about nature, and in particularly wildflowers and waterfalls, mm -hmm. but um, I, don't, I don't think I'm a lot different from most nature photographers in that we just love everything about nature, right. period. And when we get out, we look for things that, that uh, make good photo subjects and certainly colorful things like wildflowers uh, make great photo subjects. So wow. I've been, been shooting them all along. Well, I know you did, well, we've done several books on the waterfalls. Have you done any on wildflowers yet? Well, actually, I've done two. Uh, I did Wildflowers of the Southern Appalachians uh, back in the mid-90s. It's out mm -hmm. of print now, but I've got a book out now called uh, North Carolina's Best Wildflower Hikes, which, wow. which uh, guides readers to some of the best places to see, to walk and see wildflowers in the North Carolina mountains, including places just like this. This has been super spectacular, and I appreciate you 
Oh, yeah. man. I'm I've taking had, us around. I've had a great time. I appreciate you asking me. Great. It's been a blast. Wow, yet again, Kevin has managed to put us on some great subjects to photograph. You know, the Southern Appalachian Mountains have so much to offer, and I encourage each and every one of you to get out and explore this magical place for yourself. More information about this show and Kevin Adams' work is available online. Remember, it's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. I'm your host, Doug Gardner. Thank you for joining me on another wild photo adventure. Beautiful subjects to photograph. You know, the Southern Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> Jack Leg. I knew it was coming. <laughs> and explore this magical place for yourself. Okay. Coral wildflowers, which <clears throat> to photograph the sowish, the, a lot of time here in the Southern Appalachian Cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you'd like to keep up with what we're doing, remember to click that subscribe button below.